Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Military Mutterings, where I, Jack Fletcher, and my good friend, me, Kevin Janssen, shall be discussing a rather intriguing system this week. Now, usually we focus on the basis of doing ground, um, ground-based, then naval-based, and then air-based. But this is a little bit of all of that, I guess you could say. Well, more <laughs> air and naval. And what we're going to be discussing is the High Frequency Direction Finding System, abbreviated down to HFDF, or nicknamed HuffDuff, which is a type of radio detection finder. And although it is claimed that it was, this was introduced in World War II, it was actually experimented on much earlier, including on um, the uh, carrier HMS Argus, and more interestingly, on um, well, the system was initially developed in uh, 1926 for locating lightning strikes. I mean, I don't really see what use that would have, since you can actually <laughs> see the lightning, and it would only be a slight blip for a split second, and then it's gone. But I like to think that um, uh, Mr. Robert Watson Watt knew what he was doing. So. Kevin, what do we know about this? How was it applied in the Second World War, where it is most famous? Yes, now, let's first clear something up. We're not going to go into the how this actually works, because then we'll basically be having a one-hour-long math lesson, which I'm not very interested in. I don't know about you, Jack, but... And I'm not good at mathematics, <laughs> so that would be a terrible idea. Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> let's not get into that. So let, let's just look at the World War II side of things. So in World War II, it was used to catch enemy radios that were on either aircraft or naval vessels. And this was actually a very powerful tool to have. Because as soon as any sort of enemy target would want to send a radio to their friendly... Uh, let's say a ship wants to send a radio signal over to a friendly base on the shoreline. You can pick up that uh, radio signal and just say, uh, see exactly where he is. And then you can easily dis dispatch any sort of um, friendly forces to go and go ahead and intercept that enemy. Now I think we'll actually we'll, we'll get into battles right now because like in order to explain it, I guess we'll be uh, better off just going say into the battle side of things too. So let's actually go into the Battle of Britain for this as well. So um, do you want to start it off actually? Yes. Now. There was a lot of competition between the RAF and the Royal Navy for Huff Duff, because it was quite good at locating enemy targets. In fact, um, what I will say is that it was used for um, it was used in uh, Dowding's uh, what was it uh, chain home the uh, CH uh, system. Uh, mm -hmm. That was basically our, one of our major air defence parts during the uh, Battle of Britain, which would allow us to see where all these German aircraft were coming in and direct our fighters accordingly. Now, but wasn't the problem with that? Like, they were there to detect the enemies coming in, but let's say an enemy was in the middle of Britain, you didn't have any radio coverage over there to actually yes, use so, those uh, uh, units for. So I believe what happened was that was supplemented by the use of Hufter. Yeah, that that was actually the whole point of it, actually. Well, the, the for the um, air detection side of things. Yes, it was kind of like you passed through like the main big screen, and oh no, where are they over Britain? Oh, don't worry, the Hufter will tell us. And that is how they were able to direct fighters for interception. Yeah, but like, that's funny too. It works for detecting enemies, and it works for um, telling your friendlies, like, go over there. <laughs> like, yes. It's, it's a very interesting little system, if I say so myself. But something Ooh. else, you, you, you mentioned the um, rivalry between the, uh, the Air Force and the Navy. And th this was actually a problem. Making these systems was rather expensive in the earlier side of the war, so there weren't as many available, and that's the whole problem. Everybody wanted to get their hands on it, but there were only such a limited amount. Yeah, you were going to have to make some tough decisions. That's where the rivalry came from. Yes, and now if you go into the next slide... We shall go into the Belfast. Yes, this comes from... Uh, this uh, particular system is that... Um... 
is from the HMS Belfast, and I believe it's currently on display there as well, since HMS Belfast is actually a museum ship. I do need to visit it one day. But yeah, I yes. take it the uh, radio is still actually there for display purposes. Yes, and interestingly enough, Huff Duff was predicted to be responsible for the sinking of about a quarter of all of the U-boats sank during the Battle of the Atlantic. Because this wasn't just exceptional at finding surface and air targets, but it was also very good at detecting U-boats. And the thing with the U-boats is, you are, you are very dangerous on the water, but the problem is you're gonna have to go above the water at some point, and um, contact your friendlies over in well, the German main, well, I guess the shorelines for Germany then. But the problem is, you're going to have to send a radio signal to your friends over there, and you have to establish some sort of a contact on what you have to do next. And then the British are just there like, well, yeah, that's our signal, we now know where you are. So that, that's a very, yes. very tough thing. And another thing as well is that, although during the early years of the Battle of the Atlantic, um, which I believe were known as the Glory Days or something similar, <laughs> probably yeah. wasn't <clears throat> as widely available, so there was... German U-boats were more unpredictable. However, as more Huff Duff became available and more Enigma crows were actually cracked, they became rather... You, you could find them a lot easier. And in fact, quite a few uh, on quite a few occasions, uh, there were cases of uh, ships actively hunting U-boats rather than just encountering, yeah, which exactly. I also find to be rather interesting. But and something I find cool too is what Germany was going to come up with to counter the Huff Duff. Mm -hmm. Germany knew about this. But um, one important thing to note here is this you can only detect the radio signals coming in and out as soon as the, let's say, the enemy radio is active. So once the message is um, being sent out. So as soon as that turns off, you don't, uh, you don't see anything anymore. So the Germans came up with um, sort of some sort of a system that would just take their routine messages into short length messages. So they would only be sending out a very short little message that would still get the whole message uh, across to the um, the other friendlies. But for the British side, this was very annoying because you now had very short messages. So you had a very small um, window to actually get the uh, coordinates or the direction of the enemy. Hmm. Intriguing. But in the end, it didn't quite help as much. <laughs> as much as they would have liked. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, as you mentioned, the uh, the dedicated submarine hunters. This is also mainly on the air side of things. So let's say a submarine came up, and the British detected where it was, they could send out a squadron of aircraft, and by the time the submarine is back underwater, they could still be using sonar to actually find the submarine. They knew where to go, so they had a much smaller area for them to mm. scout and find the submarine. Yes, they knew the relative area, and considering on occasion yeah. you'd have multiple aircraft looking as well, it only takes one aircraft to find before you've got multiple on you. And since these U-boats weren't the best in terms of defensive armament against aircraft, it could be rather terrifying, I suppose. Yeah. <sighs> yes. Well, is there anything else you want to add about after? Well... I guess one last thing I can mention is in, uh, in from August 1944, the Germans were actually working on a new system, the uh, I think courier system. Well, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. saying it in a British way. It's probably some sort of German pronunciation. <clears throat> but th this mm -hmm. would this would be basically a system that would transmit the entire signal, so the the German U-boat trying to contact its friendlies, so the entire signal in no longer than 455 milliseconds. Now imagine if they actually got that completely working and on all of their submarines, Huff Duff would basically be, well, worthless. <laughs> you I mean, would not have enough time. It wouldn't be worthless. It yeah. wouldn't be worthless considering, um, you know, I mean, they could say that it was lightning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe, maybe they'll experiment more on the whole lightning side of things. Because, yeah, well, yeah, I think they'll be able to figure something out. But this is interesting, sort of this arms race between radars, you know. Oh, the British developed this, we're going to develop something that counters it. And then the British develop something new to try and to pick counter up... That. Yeah, to counter that, so... And so on and so forth, which is the primary issue. <laughs> but that's, that's the benefit of war, I suppose. Technology advances very quickly. 
Yes, so quickly, in fact, that you start a war with only all metal biplanes, rear, or, or not even all metal, canvas biplanes, and you end it with jet aircraft in the course of only six years. Yeah. But advocating for war to get better technology is not really the solution, I suppose. No, some would definitely argue such things. <laughs> well, I think we're going yeah. to wrap it up here then, unless you have something yes. to add to it. No, I don't. Unfortunately, whilst this was a shorter video, next week, and I will might as well say it here, expect a much longer video, because we will be discussing, and I'm very excited to say this, <laughs> the legendary ME-163 Comet, a very the long... rocket-powered fighter of the Second World. <laughs> a very long video over a very fast aircraft. Yes, I very much look forward to that. So until next week... Remember, stay safe, and we will speak to you again soon. So tune in to the next episode of Military Mutterings. See you all. See ya.